What's up, YouTube? It's Mike here, back with another video. As you can see, the 1500 behind me is finally running. I got filtration going, so let's get right into the video, and you guys can see all the plumbing and stuff that I've done over the past couple weeks. Also, I wanted to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel if you like the video, if you like these kind of projects and whatnot, please subscribe. And if you like the video, please like the video. So let's jump right into the 1500 gallon plumbing and what I've been going through over the past couple weeks. Well, I'm sorry I didn't film more of this. It's just hard to work and film on this stuff, especially in tight quarters. But here's my first drain. And since the last video, I have changed my mind about which drain will go to which filter. So if you look down the back of the tank here, you can see the pump up here. That is the pump intake. So I ran out from my bulkhead here into a ball valve so I can shut this off into a union so I can technically unscrew this from the tank bulkhead and then the drain comes down right to the floor. And I went back and forth about maybe suspending the drain against the back of the tank, but it's just way too difficult to do with the tank against the wall here. And I didn't want to take any chance of stressing this bulkhead. So I just went right down to the floor with it and it's on styrofoam, which will help absorb any kind of vibrations I'm hoping. So it should lead to a nice long-term no leak plumbing is the goal here. And you see I ran, it's not focusing back there because my hand is in the way. <laughs> so you can see that I ran a 10 foot pipe and then I had to cut a section there and with a coupling in the middle to get myself to the other end of the tank. And then what I'll do at the end, what I'll do over here is real simple. I'll do 45s to get myself up to this, to this level, back up to the top elevation. So pretty simple. And again, I originally planned on coming out of this one and going directly into the pipe and then running my return long into the far end, but I switched it up. It's not really too big of a difference. This just makes it way easier for me to work on the second filter and it makes it so I can have the second filter on this side of the tank. So I'd rather have all filtration let me back up a little bit. I'd rather have all filtration on this side of the tank, all my pumps on this side of the tank, rather than having anything over here at all, other than, you know, the plumbing that you'll really never see is the goal. So that's why I changed my mind, and now everything will be on this end. And until I build my second filter, I'm going to just plumb a ball valve shut off into this, and this isn't, this isn't even on, it's just dry fitted still. But I'll plumb a ball valve, in, ball valve into this and I'll do that right now. So all I can do is just have this shut off and then tie into it when I'm ready. So I've made a couple of these. So this will screw in to that, the other side of that bulkhead. And then obviously we have a threaded union on here and the other end of the union is right here, and that will be a short length to this side of the tank. And then I made a second one, the exact same thing here, and then there's the other end, and this is the long pipe that's gonna go all the way back. And that'll be, again, for a second filtration system that I'll add eventually. What am I taking off? Shoes! Your shoes! Yep, I'm wearing shoes. No shoes in the house! Take them off! What?
today is the day. I'm gonna start adding water again and hopefully test for leaks. So I've got a shut off on my secondary filtration. So this won't be running for a little while, but very easy to simply add anything I need right to it. And it's not too intrusive. I know it sticks out a little bit, but that's the only way I can make it so I can actually unscrew this if I ever need to. So this is the return for the secondary filter. Obviously, I'm just leaving a little extra length. And I will paint this stuff. I'm just not sure if I want to do it wall color or trim color or tank color, but eventually I will paint this plumbing. I know I painted this and I might end up changing it. I don't know yet. Uh, I do have to still connect my first drain to the pump, which will take me all of 10 minutes. I'm going to probably do that right now while I'm filling. But that is pretty much it. We're ready to go. So let's start adding water again. We should. My goal is to get at least halfway full today. Here we go again. At least we know it holds water this time. So hopefully no issues with the epoxy again. This is just fresh clean water. It's not water from the aquarium this time. There shouldn't be any traces of ammonia or nitrate in this. It should just be fresh clean water. There really shouldn't even be much chlorine at all in it, but I will dose it. I will dose it with dechlorinator just to be safe, but we should be good to go. While that fills up, I figured I'd kind of give you guys a view of what's going on back here as best I can. It is pretty simple. This is a bad, it's a bad angle, but this one comes right down to the floor again. I think I showed you guys that already. This return has to sweep down underneath the second return come around and look at it from the other end this was a straight shot and this was a straight shot I was a little naive thinking I could just angle these down and get a good 45 but it was impossible at the lengths so what I had to do was I had to keep them at even 90 degree angles so that's why I sweeped that one down and then leveled it back out and we're coming out straight here. It just needed to be done that way or I'll never be able to, I would have never been able to tie in like this with a 45. Had to be level. So you live, you learn. I did make it work one way or another. I also forgot to turn the lights on and I did some wire management like I talked about in the previous video. It's not perfect because I got so many wires but for the most part you don't see any you really don't see any from this view, which I planned out. So if you look at it from this angle, you don't see a single wire. I love that. I love that nothing's hanging down over the tank either. Might add something in the future, but for now I don't need it. So I'm really excited. It's actually very well lit. Now that we're getting some water in it, I still feel that it's very well lit. It shows up a lot bluer on camera than it does in person. And again, I don't know why that is, but I'm very excited about this. I love the nice clean look. And even from this angle, the wires really don't look like much of anything. It's very little. I've got them all on one Bluetooth switch so I can turn all five of them on and off at the same time. And then obviously I can change colors of a couple of them, which is nice. Although I'll probably never do that because I don't see the point. But it is a cool little feature to be able to change the colors. I've got a bunch of LEDs that do that. I just never use it. So again, I'm hoping that I don't have any issues. I have a bunch of connections for the plumbing that I'm very worried about. Good chances I'm gonna have at least one leak. I like to hard plumb most things in, but because I have a bunch of bulkheads that I don't wanna ever have to cut out if I ever have any problems, I do have a bunch of threaded connections that I am worried about. Those are my biggest concern. That and these lower drains against the epoxy, that rubber seal for the bulkheads may not seal perfectly. So I'm a little worried about that too. Worst comes to worst, I'll drain it under that and I'll silicone the rings. I'll silicone those bulkheads right in to avoid that. But then I still have to worry about all those threaded connections, all the threaded connections at the pump, and then all my threaded unions even because some of them are difficult to close because they're in tight quarters. So. 
I do got a lot of concerns, a lot of worries. So once it's once I confirm that these don't leak from the bulkheads, then I'm gonna have to confirm that all the plumbing doesn't leak too. And then even my overflow, that one I'll probably never have to worry about. But then I got another one over here that I definitely have to worry about possibly leaking. So we'll see how it goes. So we're still filling. This is gonna take a while obviously, but I did finish up my connection to the pump. So again, now all I have left to do is my second dairy filtration. I'm not in a rush to do and I still got to do this backwash valve so uh, and I'm debating on how I'm gonna do that still my plan originally was to tie into this sump outlet for the house but this reduces to inch and a half and I don't know if that's going to affect pressure too much for backwash so I might have to figure something else out or do a temporary backwash line where I can just kind of like bring a rubber hose or something outside and backwash it that way. So uh, I'll do that eventually, not in a rush right now, we'll just get filling. So we are over halfway full now. I made this little bucket contraption with a pump and it just has polyfill in it so it's just kind of to help get rid of any little debris that might be left in the system from the construction process. I know there is a bunch of little stuff but nothing too serious. But looks pretty good. And I tested this, well I tested both bulkheads, I'll try to get in here for you guys. I tested both of these and no leaks overnight. And then I opened this to test this whole drain run all the way to the pump and I didn't have any leaks. However, I must have forgot to tighten this union. I'm such an idiot. And this one was spewing out water pretty good when I first started. But once I tightened that up, we were good. No harm done. So I got the water line up there pretty good. And I did have a leak from this bulkhead at the bottom, which I was able to do the screwdriver trick with. Some of you are probably familiar with that. Basically, a screwdriver and a hammer, you can tighten down bulkheads in tight spots if you're very careful while you do it. So that seems to have stopped leaking now. It's been over an hour. I never lowered the water level or changed anything. I just stopped filling once it started leaking. Tightened that and the leak stopped. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna try to plug in my pump and see if my system works and see if I can't find more leaks. So I've got the vacuum ready to go. And this should be filled, this should be filled at least past this, at least past this uh, ball valve and should have plenty of water for the pump supply. And I almost tripped and died. I've fallen and I can't get up. And we are way above our bulkhead here, so should have plenty of water to feed this system. So I'm gonna go for it. I'll put you guys on the tripod and we can see if I don't blow any of these connections up. All right guys, moment of truth, here we go. minor see I leaked from this and it, as I'm looking at it it looks like it's not really completely screwed in anyway so that's pretty minor let's see if I can uh, tighten that up okay I torqued that down so let's see if I can plug it back in and what happens another shot Okay, we're gonna try again. I really don't think I can torque it down any more than this.
slightly. All right. Well, it seems to have stopped leaking. Stopped leaking, but I think I was sucking in air. So I'm just gonna go through the whole system and make sure there's no leaks, but I think we're good. Might just be the water level is too low. All right, so it looks like I'm leak free at the moment anyway, but this is ridiculous amount of flow. I mean, I know the pump is, is very strong, but this is way too much. So I'm going to put a different, I'm gonna screw in a different uh, fitting to this return here to try to keep it off the glass like this. And yeah, pretty intense though. Seems to be working. And again, I, I seem to have cleared up all the leak issues. It was just loose fittings. Not too big of a deal. I knew that was possible. Um, this is a ridiculous amount of flow though, no matter what I do. So, I don't know. It's almost like way overkill for this tank. I know some people may disagree with that, but I think it's way over, <laughs> way overkill. Well, let me try, let me try uh, putting a different fitting on that and see how it looks. I swapped it for a 90, a threaded 90. I had them lying around, luckily. So let's give this another shot. Much better. Much better. That'll work. So that way, just kind of pushing against water. I don't want it. I just didn't like the idea of it spraying against the glass like that. Something I will mention right away is that pump is so effing loud. That's going to annoy the hell out of me. So I'll build a door and I'm going to. Yeah, you can see how loud it is. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna put foam all through here to try to keep that noise down. And I'll put a door with foam too, but some ventilation maybe on the bottom. But hell yeah, we are running guys. I think I'm gonna keep filling it. Alright guys, so that pretty much gets us caught up to present day and where I'm at right now with the tank. I left it running overnight and I had no leaks. I was very scared to leave it, but I put my leak detectors all around it to help me feel a little bit better. And again, it's really loud, which kind of sucks. Um, one thing I have decided to do, which will delay putting fish in it a little bit, is I'm going to run this off of both returns and both drains rather than just one and one. I think the suction is way too much for just one drain. Even though it's sufficient for the pump, I think it's way too much for the fish. And I think that flow needs to be distributed also. So I'll distribute the flow over the course of both returns. And I think that will even things out. And to be honest, I'm debating whether I will add a second filter at all to this. I may just be running it completely off of this eventually. So when I am ready to put fish in it, I'm going to put both those FX6s on this immediately. Plus, I've got all my drops for my airlines so I can take all these different sponges out of these tanks all the way around and I can drop sponges in here too. That should be plenty to add fish I think. Plus obviously the addition of the Ultima will start cycling slowly and I'll dump some stability in here just to give that a little bit of a boost. But it looks awesome. I think it's pretty epic. It did cloud up a little bit overnight. There really isn't an ammonia source so 
I'm thinking maybe that's the epoxy. I don't know. Or maybe there is a slight enough ammonia source to make it cloudy. I'm not really sure, but either way, it still looks awesome. And I wish, as always, that I could get far enough back in front of it for you guys to get a good look at it, but I just can't right now. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys watching, as always. Again, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in that next video. Thanks.